Hey, you guys. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so here is the tea. We need you and your help <laughs> because we can't do it alone. And it takes a village to make a podcast. <laughs> yes. So we're really, really <laughs> so, excited to mm-hmm. let you guys in on an opportunity or two um, for you guys to work with us and get paid. Um, no free work. Um, no. So we are looking for some media gurus, I guess you could say. Oh, yeah. Someone who mm-hmm. loves audio, someone who loves podcasting, someone who loves dating straight. Um, yeah. Let, we need you. <laughs> <laughs> so basically what we're looking for is we're looking for a producer and an editor. Um, so if you're like in college or just graduated college, please email us at datingstraightstr8 at gmail.com with your resume and maybe like anything you've edited or just like projects you've worked on and yeah that's we come on please (laughs) we would love to work with you and we would love to work with like someone who already listens to the show someone who knows us and Mm -hmm. someone who thinks that they can help us take this pod like to the next level yeah so So. let's go baby send your resumes again that's dating str and the number eight at gmail.com. Yeah, link also in the bio. Thanks. Enjoy the episode. Amy. Hey, Jack. I'm gay. Oh my God, that is so funny. I'm also gay. I was uh, going to tell you. Wait, really? Yeah. And, and you're, you're listening, listening to Dating Straight. Hey, Amy. Hey, Jack. Hey, Miss hey, J. Ms. Alexander. J. Runway diva coach extraordinaire crazy person we grew up watching america's sex Top model i remember seeing kim stoles in season five and being like wow she could get it and i was um 12 so this was like <laughs> the first gay show that i saw i think that i can recall that wasn't like the ellen degeneres show and kim stoles yeah, that was really funny because there was a moment with her. She got upset with me because she said I should have known better because I'm gay about something that she was trying to do. Interesting. When hmm. when was that? What do you on on the show? Gee, I remember at one point she said, Come on, Miss J, you know, he's gay, so he should have known better than that. Something I thought that she should have been able to do. And I'm thinking like in my head, I'm thinking, well, I don't think your sex really had anything to do with you, you know, doing the job. In my head, but something that happened, I remember her saying that. But I've seen her um, since then, of course. And it, and it wasn't a mean thing, it was just something of me kind of going, girl, pull it together. And it may have been <laughs> one of the teachers in a pair of hot heels or something, like, girl. Oh, yeah. I think it, there was something about how it was like Kim, whenever she got girly, she thought it was silly or something. And you said, like, it's not silly, it's like you just have to. Yeah, it was play something, yeah, something. Part. Yeah, see, so, oh, God, trigger that memory. And I don't drink and I don't smoke and I've never done drugs. So my memory is just kind of yeah. like, okay. <laughs> but if you talk about chiffon, lace, taffeta, uh, silk tulle embroideries, kind of a bias, like mutual sleeves, things like that, I remember those things. <laughs> <laughs> it's priorities. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but it's really funny. A- ANTM, like Amy was saying, to me, it did sort of feel like, even though obviously it wasn't like a gay show about, you know, It's not like Queer Eye, right? Where it's like a gay show. But it felt like a show that was on primetime television. um, And like every person watched it. And like we had, we did have that queer representation through you um, and through other Jay and through some of the contestants. And it felt like it was so normalized for that time to have like amazing queer people and that's why we're so, so excited to have you today. Just had to let you know. <laughs> you know, my thank you, but it, because for me, it wasn't normal. <laughs> for <laughs> me, it wasn't normal. Right. And um, I never had an issue with, with who I was since birth. I mean, I came out of uterus being who I was. So, I mean, for me, it was just, <laughs> I, ne- I never, and I, and I didn't think it was anything. I've been having issues. People say, you know, I've never been beaten up because I was gay, because I cross-dressed or dressed in drag. It, I just went through life just being and doing me. And that's why I was at my cameras with that. It's really like, you know, just be fierce, be fabulous, be and do you. 
Um, and I just, it was, it was normal for me. I'm number, listen, I'm number seven of 10 kids. Wow. wow. I grew up in the South Bronx in the hood. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was just me just being and doing me. I just did my thing, you know? So therefore mm -hmm. all these struggles that people have coming out, I never had those struggles. I never had those stories. I don't have those being chased from school by uh, boys because I was gay. It was like, because I'll whip your ass. I mean, I'm gay. <laughs> I like to fight. So, I mean, it's a thing with me. But I've never had, I've never had those issues with my sexuality on, oh my God. So it's just bizarre for me when people, I mean, I'm, I'm honored and I'm tickled when fans come up to me in the street and they say, oh my God, you know, you've been so, such an inspiration to me. And I'm kind of going, I accept it and I, I receive it and, mm -hmm. and I thank them. But in my head, I keep thinking it was probably more difficult for me to growing up gay then than it is now. Mm -hmm. So what was I doing different? And I, and I can't answer that question other than just being myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. If, if it makes sense. Yeah, no, it does. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys are from a little small town. Uh, people can say, oh, that's because you come from New York City. No, but I lived up in the hood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would get on the subway train with a raccoon fox tail coat on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I knew that I made from, I went and just bought these scraps of raccoon tails, forgot for how much a tail, and I'd pin them onto a coat to make it fashion. You know, I wear coochie cutters, I wear hot pants. I mean, I. What's a coochie cutter? Girl, call up the <laughs> coochie cutters. Your shorts are so cut. Your shorts are so short. They cut them in your coochie. <laughs> and and uh, in my shirts around my waist. I mean, I remember I went for a job, which is a really great story. People laugh about it. I went for a job. My friend Jennifer Brown, I'll forget it. She said, let's go get a job for the Fresh Air Fund. Summer job. And I thought, yeah, because that way I can go buy my own school clothes and buy what I wanted. And I went down, big afro, picked, and it was this perfect shape. And I wore the blue and white striped shirt tied at the waist, the coochie cutters, the jeans cut off short, <laughs> and the Hercules sandals. And I kind of went in and I took the application. And, you know, in the end, done. About 10 days later, Jennifer got the call to come down to fill out her information and paperwork because she got hired. Mm -hmm. She said, did you get the call? I said, no, I didn't get the call yet, girl, I didn't get the call. She said, yeah, and I was maybe 15, 16. I said, I didn't get the call. She said, you didn't get it? So, well, I'm gonna go down and I'm going to ask them oh, to contact oh. you, why? And she yeah. asked them and the man said to her, we didn't hire him. This could be my first taste of gay discrimination in a really odd, mm -hmm. off kind of way. He said, we didn't hire him because we thought that he might be gay and the parents would get upset. Mm. Your parents yeah. would get upset? Yeah, that they hired a gay counselor, you know, for the it's camp, it was summer camp. Oh, okay. And then I said, as Ms. J does, <laughs> but I am gay. Right, yeah. Yeah. And I know, like, well, okay, well, fine. I went apply for another job and got another job. Yeah. Uh -huh. But, you know, it was just really those really like, huh? What? You think I am? Nothing. It's not a thought I am. It's just clear. <laughs> I mean, hello. Yeah. I went, in there, I went yeah. in there kind of feeling my moment, you know, having that right. moment. And mm -hmm. um, I've never experienced even that, which may be later in the show. I don't know if you edit how you do this, which you guys to do, but knowingly, in Ireland, I experienced it going to a gay bar at 9, 10 at night, and I was told that they looked at me and said, we're closed and just shut the door. A gay bar? In Ireland. In Ireland. Wow. In, in Dublin. And then um, I experienced racism openly um, in home in Paris, going to the store, and a man being very angry that I came in and wouldn't let me try anything on. I could just have to buy it. And that was a moment. But here in New York City, I really never really experienced anything knowingly, outwardly that was like, oh, that's what that was? Because I just, I just kind of, well, well, you know, la, 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 I just kind of go through. <laughs> just didn't see it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, if, if or, or chose to move past it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think the thing that I chose to move past was that thing at summer camp. 
you know that but other than that i've never experienced never that i can remember going in not having any of those issues not that i was no matter what confront it mm-hmm. but other than that i'm thinking like oh, well and, and that i really haven't lived here in that in that in that bubble, I just, like I said, I just went through life just being a dual me child. So those things, it's not, it's, and it's nothing that I forgot. It's just that I never had that experience. I gave you my three experiences between Ireland, France, and not getting a job because a young teenager, they thought I was gay. You know, mom, that's a thought, and I am, and that's it. But it wasn't an issue for me. Right. Yeah, well, but I, I think, think that's also what is... That's like why... Like, Exactly. I was going to say, I think like, um, yeah, like that's also how it should be. You know, like obviously we don't want like every gay like inspiration or whatever to like be the person who struggled. Like there's something empowering about like the gay person you look up to who's like powerful and like knows their self-worth and like won't let anyone mm-hmm. get in their way, you know? For sure. You know, guys, I think for me it was a thing that it wasn't a gay thing. It was just like you didn't like me. Mm-hmm. I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking then. You didn't like me because he said it wasn't. He he was afraid of what the parents like his that the parents would say about me, mm-hmm. and maybe now would be if that would happen now, girl. There'd be like three thousand people outside the damn fucking office of doors right now. Absolutely, absolutely. Five thousand people outside the door. But for me, it was kind of like, oh well. You know, and for me, I didn't take it as you didn't. It was the black thing, gay thing. You just didn't like me. You, they, they, they may not. They may not because once and he said, you know, we are afraid of what their parents may say. Right. And I, oh, yeah. well, well, you know, no, child, little child, please, bye. And that's what I <laughs> yeah. said. Why must we? In my TV meeting last week, my thing is, I would like to do a show where it is for, not necessarily for the gay people who have maybe three to five positions in television. And we know what those positions are. Do we hear? So we either decorators, hairdressers, clothing designers, makeup artists, hairstylists. Mm -hmm. But why can we have gay, the gay congressman out there being the, the light, the garbage picker, the construction worker, they do exist. Why can't we have them brought to light for other gay people who don't want to do hair, makeup, design clothes, interior decorate, and right. things like that? Why can't we have something else that to mentor them, which I think can be difficult. And that only comes from people in the street asking me, um, how could I become this or that or the other? I'm not good at makeup. I'm not good at hair. I'm not good at just go and do it. Just go apply for the job. Mm-hmm. Just yeah. go apply for the job, get information, research. Everything that goes viral is not true. <laughs> well, information for the madam, you know what I mean? Because people look at everything that goes viral, then that is the, the, the word. No, some things are just done that are kind of crazy, that are funny, that people get misinformed about. Mm-hmm. And I think young people today, we have so many more... Um, things to look at with people in our community, you know, to inspire them, to help guide them, to help lead them into other things. I want to be an architect, you know, I want to, I want to repair the elevator in the building, I want to be an electrician, but can I be gay and do that? Yes, you can. You don't have to be a hairdresser or a makeup artist or a fashion designer in order to have success and, and happy. So find you happy. Definitely. Well, I think what was so inspiring to someone like me is that being gay was not the central focus of like your personality. You were just a normal person who also happened to be gay. And that for me growing up was very powerful. Um, so I think that's what we were trying to say. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. And you said it. Yeah, you, you said it. You were trying to say it. You said it. No, 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 no. But I was kind of going to it because I step out of it and I just think of the things that have, you know, as I travel through life and travel around the world, the things that people say, you know, to me. And I'm thinking like, we didn't like you, Miss J, because you were gay. We just liked you because you were being you. Yeah, absolutely. And as you just said, Amy, it's not that we chose to like you because you were gay. We just happened to like you because of who you were and you just happened you're a hoot. to be gay. Yeah. And a motherfucker, yeah. a hoot yeah. and a motherfucking holler. <laughs> 
Thank you so much to Dipsy for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. We love Dipsy. We are sexual beings. And whoa, don't whoa, whoa. you forget it. <laughs> I feel <laughs> like true. quarantine, it's so easy to forget, you know, that etc <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but dipsy is here to remind you so many new year's resolutions are about doing less of something but why not give yourself more more pleasure mm. more rest more time to connect with yourself yes. and your body get in the habit with dipsy dipsy is an audio app full of short sexy stories designed to turn you on each Dipsy story features characters like the real people and immersive scenarios so you feel like you're right there. Find stories about an off-limits hookup with your professor or a costume Whoa. party that takes Whoa. things to the next level. Sign me up. <laughs> or maybe a story where your partner tells you exactly what to do or you try a new toy together. Wow, this is... <laughs> <laughs> everything I need. Um, they release new stories every week, so there's always more to explore, no matter who you're into or what turns you on. Dipsy also has wellness sessions to help you learn more about yourself and bedtime stories and soundscapes to help you relax before you drift off. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy's offering a 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash straight. That's a 30-day free trial when you go to Dipsy, that's D-I-P-S-E-A, stories.com slash straight. Again, that's dipsystories.com slash straight. Thanks, Dipsy. This episode is also sponsored by Relief Band. I literally have mine on right now. It's feels. I feel it. <laughs> Did you know that a third of Americans regularly suffer from nausea? I'm not an American yet, but I also <laughs> suffer from nausea. It's uncomfortable. It feels like you're going to throw up. You can't really focus on anything other than your nausea. Um, and it ruins otherwise a fun time. That's why I'm so excited about our new partner, Relief Band. Yes. So let me tell you a little bit about Relief Band because it is science and cool. Um, yes. Relief Band is the number one FDA cleared anti-nausea wristband that has been clinically proven to quickly relieve and effectively prevent nausea and vomiting associated with motion sickness, anxiety, migraine, hangover, morning sickness, chemotherapy, and so much more. The product is 100% drug-free, non-drowsy, and provides all natural relief with zero side effects for as long as you need. The technology was originally developed over 20 years ago in hospitals to relieve nausea from patients, but now the relief band is available to the masses. How it works is relief band stimulates a nerve in your wrist um, that travels with part of your brain that controls nausea, and then it blocks the signal your brain is sending to your stomach telling you that you are sick. Um, relief band is the only over-the-counter wearable device that has been used in hospitals and oncology clinics to treat nausea and vomiting. So I am wearing mine today because I woke up a little anxious. I wake up sometimes at six in the morning with raging anxiety. <laughs> Can't explain it. Um, but I put on my relief band and it's literally working. Obviously, like I'm not a scientist. I don't understand the science behind it. But genuinely, it is working. And I'm the type of person who gets also very motion sickness in like long car rides, especially at night. So I'm so excited to try this instead of feeling like shit yeah. <laughs> for the whole time. So <laughs> this is way better. <laughs> um, so this year, 2021, ensure nausea is never going to be the reason that you're missing out on life's important moments. Right now, Relief Band has an exclusive offer just for dating straight listeners. If you go to reliefband.com, Com and use promo code dating, you'll receive 20% off plus free shipping and a no questions asked 30 day money back guarantee. So head to R E L I E F B A N D.com and use promo code dating for 20% off. Thanks, Relief Band. It's no surprise. Um, I think there's been a lot of talk recently about, especially during the pandemic, like revisiting ANTM and like discussing, you know, um, just everything, the goods and the bads of representation. Um, and we did want to get your take on um, the show now, how many ever years later it is. Um, and yeah, I know. Um, I just wanted to get your take on like what when people say that the show is, you know, there are a lot of parts that are problematic. Um, what do you think about, 
you know, those moments. And for those people, it probably was problematic. And remember, it's called production. Mm. It's called television show. That's it. You know, you can just take what you need out of it, filter it out. You know, yes, hang the girl from the building. Well, I haven't seen too many models hanging from a building for a photo shoot and keeping a model-esque. <laughs> Well, you can do it. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, but it's it's TV, it's it's television, you know. And also to to make it very very clear, I was never really on photo shoots. So when I hear right. these stories, I just hear those stories. You know, for me, if you mm -hmm. saw me, I was always on panel, mm -hmm. judging judging the situation. But I was never on the I was never the art director. I was never there doing that. So I would hear those things. I kind of go, oh, and just you know, look off my head. I know what happens in real modeling business. I know what happens, you know, where you are being judged on how you look and your body type and you, you're going to choose the best one for the job. And sometimes right. the, prettiest, the prettiest girl is not the best model. Right. Yeah. So right. I, because I, I think she relies on being pretty. Right. And I think when they rely on being pretty, they work less. When you're, when you're a little bit special, and you got that one eye, that one eye that's kind of like wonky. <laughs> Are you talking about me? Yeah, you got to bounce it. <laughs> and you have to bounce an eye. You know, you got Naj Orman had long legs and a short waist. So it was kind of how they had to fit clothing on her, you know, to get the body proportion right. It's about how you're standing up. You know, some girls have interesting noses that they think are ugly because I think for most people, models are aesthetically pretty. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of girls who have that moment. There's this one girl that they kept trying to even work with. Look, girl, you ain't never gonna be no model. Shit. Okay, so I guess like the show was trying to emulate the industry, which was kind of, I mean, is I'm sure still kind of a messed up um, industry. It's just like following what society thinks is and, pretty. And, and yes, and what was pretty, what you know. And again, I don't come from that background of anything being the norm. You know what I mean? That's just being normal. It's just mm -hmm. that I'm thinking like, just be, be, there's something special about all of us. And I'm trying to relate to the girls who can never be. I mean, if you look at models today, they're all over the place, different heights, different yeah. body types. I mean, before, mm -hmm. do you hear that clicking sound? Yeah. Do you hear clicking sound? I do. I do actually. But it's okay. What is it? <laughs> An old building and a radiator did probably work. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Don't it's worry fine, about it too fine. much. <laughs> okay. So I think right now what Tara would, Tara had a TV show that she created. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tara had a TV show that she was executive producer on. Mm -hmm. Tara Banks was putting into that show visuals. You know, it's, it's ratings, it's visuals, it's what she's done, but she at. <laughs> It's, it's really it. <laughs> she added a okay. little extra. So, you know, you have the girls walking through the water. You have them uh, walk in holding fire in their hands, you know, for a challenge. Because Tyra's whole thing was you have to be up, open, and ready for every and anything. Mm -hmm. You know, so what was problematic with them, you know, the, uh, the, photo shoot with the, the black face, you know, which she darkened the skin color of the girls because, you mm -hmm. know, talk about mixing races, where they came yeah. from. People are of mixed race. I have half Japanese, have blacks in my family, but I don't understand where that came about in that photo shoot. I didn't understand it. And again, mm -hmm. I wasn't there. I was at the production meeting. I'm not privy of that. I judge the photos when they come to me and I'll be like, okay. You know, okay. <laughs> so we are. What was what was going on here? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, you, and you just kind of go and you just a picture. I'm not thinking yeah. what's going to happen in 16 years. Whole thing with Danny's gap in her tooth, which I think was mm -hmm. really odd for people to make a big, huge thing about it when Tara said, you know, uh, you think you get a couple of girls gap in your tooth? And I remember sitting there saying, they probably didn't make it to air. But Lauren Hunt made millions of dollars with the gap in that tooth. Right. That's right. why I thought that was just that's why I thought it was just really a weird thing. Okay. And I it might look look, okay, well, you know. And the girl ended up winning the competition. 
which is mm -hmm. also really, really funny. Did Tara ask her to fix her gap? Again, I don't know. I'm only going by hearsay for what I'm hearing as people are speaking. And well, the dentist maybe asked her, do you want to close it up? And she said, no. Then it went into productions. I, I love when Danny explained herself. It was a clear, did you see when Danny explained herself about that? On, on like Instagram Live recently? Something, you know, but yeah, maybe this past summer, something like that. It was really interesting. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. Right? And, and I thought, okay, so there you cleared it up. Because again, for me, I heard that conversation, but when Danny cleared it up and I thought, Thank you for clearing that up because now I know. Because again, for mm -hmm. me, it's, it's my problem is, is if it's not my journey, I don't go on it. Yeah. I, I just I, keep, I just, that's not my journey, baby. So I can't, I can't speak on your behalf on your journey per se, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. I, I think like you only know what you know. And I think that, um, you guys were, I mean, there were a lot of great things about the show. I think there was a lot of like great representation, but then obviously like, I think that there was a lot of stuff that we didn't even realize that it was so problematic and maybe damaging, definitely damaging um, actually for that time. And we're only kind of coming into that consciousness of learning like, no, self love is important. And that's why I think that the modeling industry itself is changing and then that would trickle down into a show like America's Next Top Model. Like I think that Tyra's intentions and your intentions were good and to like try and set these girls up for success in this cutthroat industry. But mm -hmm. I think that the way that it happened was a little damaging. messy. And yeah, and that's like fully okay to admit like every single person makes mistakes and even though you know well and and it's like you're you're also you only knew like what you're getting at amy like you and tyra and everyone you know everyone in the modeling industry like only learned that from the modeling industry right so it's like yes yeah yeah, yeah. Then, yeah you and, grew up in the modeling industry right yes yeah, so for me so not i mean i you know i went to school to be an accountant i ended up living in japan that's my education is accounting and then yeah. I, everything I learned, I learned as trial and error along the way. So I said, you should model for mm -hmm. job or go to. And I remember, I remember saying to the woman on Madison Avenue here in New York City, I'm not, I'm not pretty enough to be a model. She says, but she, I see what past the story, you have a great sense of style. Oh, because that wasn't in my head back then. I would just mm -hmm. be able to design clothes. I was doing my thing. So the things that you learn as you go along, the things you learn, mm -hmm. the, information, the information that you gather, you can think, oh, okay. I didn't know that um, and be on the casting list meant no blacks. But you go to oh casting my God. in Paris, they says no. And I thought again, and they would say, it's not that I didn't want any blacks. They had their black models for them. So they had their black models that they chose already. So they didn't want to see anybody else. And again, I would show up anyway. Because for me, I'm thinking, oh, but my personality, you know, that's so important, the personality, the character, you know, you would show up anyway. And, and they, would, they wouldn't say no. They'd see you, they'd have you walk and be, okay, thank you, and take a picture, and then out the door you go. But was I wasting my time? Probably, yes, in, you know, for it being NB for no blacks, because they didn't want to have black models in this show, or they had their three. Mm hmm mm hmm Yeah, you know, and I said, why is it be so big? Because I meant they didn't have, they wouldn't see any blo more black models. And again, I was like, oh, okay, you know, no more black models. I'm going anyway. I'm, I'm yeah. thinking maybe I, can, maybe I can change their mind. Right. But I, I challenged it and I went in it and maybe it didn't happen. And if it didn't happen, it wasn't, it wasn't a thing for me. You know who you want to spend your money on. You know who you're trying to reach and your client and your customer. I can argue with that right now. Today, I can argue with it. Sure, sure. Yeah, there's been a lot of change um, in the industry for sure. And now it would yeah. be a whole big Lost thing. It. You know? yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and you don't want, and everything shouldn't be necessarily a black and white issue, but it is. It is. Black people spend money, they, they wear no, clothes. That's, dis that's discrimination, straight up. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. So, I mean, so it is. You think about it now, it's kind of like, wait a minute. That was really kind of fucked up then. When you Absolutely. think about it yeah. now. 
yeah, yeah, yeah hindsight, knowing hindsight. what we know today. Yeah, exactly. Um, s- speaking of hindsight, I know that you rewatched at least some of the series back over last summer with Mr. J. And is there anything that you saw that you would have done differently today, knowing what you know now? Well, there surely wouldn't have been the, the skin issue, the black in the face issues. That wouldn't have happened. That wouldn't have happened um, for the most part. Because um, that was one of the things that stands out to me. That's the one thing that stands out to me. We did plus size girls on the show. Tyra did it because she mm-hmm. thought the girl could win. And the thing about it was the girl, Takara, did win, or she went on to have major success. Right. Oh, for sure. It just, it just, it just goes to show you we what we see visually sometimes we're mm-hmm. we're not we're not the god we're, we're not the antichrist of <laughs> what you think um is beauty yeah right beauty is Absolutely, like everything yeah. people it's subjective. crave diversity it's subjective. Yeah. yeah yeah so you have a subjective situation that you're in you kind of go see look haha <laughs> you know I may not have been 10 foot seven and a size three and a half, nine and <laughs> two, but bitch, I had more success than the winner did. Just wow. Yeah. You know, and, and, and then, ha ha, you know. And, you know, I, it's, uh, once again, once I shoot it, I'm very Sarah Paulson. Do I watch it? Not really, if it comes, and then I will go back home. So I would say, shit, I would go back home to Paris. I would just go to Paris, Paris. I, I go home and that's it. And when there's some yeah. TV, it's not airing one in France. And then I'd wow. say, oh, can I, get, can, I get, can I get a copy of the season of the cycle so I can get and watch it to see what they edited out, what was said, what made sense, what didn't make sense. But it was like, I was on to the next girl, I was on to the next paycheck. Thank you so much, Usual Wines, for also sponsoring this episode of the podcast. Mm -hmm. Usual Wines is wine for the modern drinker. Each bottle is 6.3 ounces, which is a heavy pour or about a glass and a half of wine. So there's going to be no more pouring wine down the sink when you don't finish the bottle. Because of the single serve format and bottle design, Usual is always fresh. No more flat bubbly or stale rosé. The wines are low carb and have zero grams of sugar how many grams none (laughs) usual has a red blend a rosé a sparkling white wine they also have usual spritz which is a low alcohol low calorie wine spritzer that's made of sparkling wine and guava juice Mm. it's like white claw for grown-ups each (laughs) serving has just 83 calories oh my god i don't know calories but sounds good yeah yeah Um, sounds good cute (laughs) usual wines are made from great world-class areas called avas like in california um we've got Mm. napa sonoma santa barbara and are made with minimal intervention zero sugar and zero additives it's really yummy i um was happy to take not just one free case than usual (laughs) but also amy's case (laughs) i kind of Um, got scammed i'll be honest (laughs) I didn't know that they were going to send us each a case. So I was like, okay, you like wine. You can have it. But Well, I happily drank 24 (laughs) um, of these glasses. They sent you 24? Yeah, and they were all really good. And I drank all of them. (laughs) Um, So good news for you wine lovers out there go check out their website at www.usualwines.com and use our discount code dating for eight dollars off your first order and try your first glass on us thanks usual wines (laughs) my first gay pride by the way was 2016. really wow ever wow and because i why and i i just thought you know i was never here for it what happened to your most awesome place? So I kind of thought, oh, I'm going to be out there and watch and scream and put a dress on today or Halloween. I do that all the time. And it was not. One day, child girl, please. And, uh, and I, I, I don't need to be out here screaming and yelling or parading around to say what I had to say. But then it was Chris Hellgard, who was then the CEO of Kiehl's, who said to me, Ms. J. Um, we would like to have you on our float. And I said to do what? He said, you know, just, 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 
be there. Just just be present. Said you know, I think they would love you. And I'm thinking like, well, okay, look, very very you know the guy in Saturday Night Live. Oh yeah, all right, yeah okay. So mm-hmm. I went, and this is when it hit me. When we finally pulled out of Wayward we Station, coming out Fifth Avenue, by the time by the time we got down to sort of like in the 20s it's when i saw a lot of the a lot of the young gay kids teenagers mm-hmm. and, and that's when i dubbed them queenagers <laughs> they started screaming mystery we love that's what i was trying to say and i remember waving and and but waving and then i got the black girls uh quibble and then I started. Then I started crying. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because, because, yeah, because the love that was coming from them was so intense. Was so mm-hmm. so intense, and some of them were crying. And I started crying. And I thought, oh my mm-hmm. god! And that's when I thought, actually, you're living in your own world, but you're actually a little bit bigger in their world. Absolutely. But you're so mm-hmm. much bigger for them, and mm-hmm. that was my first time also going to vote for Obama's second term. Mm. Never voted. I haven't lived in America in over 20 something years. So I wow. didn't think about, I'm try, oh, child going to the embassy to vote. Child, I just, it was just me being me. And it was later in life that I realized these things are important. Mm-hmm. How important Absolutely. is this important? How important that your vote did count? How important that you visually, you were there, let them know that it's okay to put on a pair of high heels and some makeup and pretend you're on the catwalk walk up and down the street and be fierce and fabulous outside of gay pride and Halloween. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So it's okay. That's why you are such an icon in our community, for sure. And, and again, but those are things that I said that I was so busy doing my thing that I didn't think that it was an issue that you were struggling with is what I was trying to say. I didn't think mm-hmm. that you being who you were in a small town in Iowa or some place in the Midwest or some yeah. place, you know, else that you were struggling with being who you were because mm-hmm. you didn't have any role models around you. I had no role models around me. I was just doing me. I didn't have wow. anyone that was gay in my neighborhood that I knew openly growing up. No gay brothers and sisters, just just being me. And I'm thinking that was normal for me. It was just normal yeah. way of me to be my person. But I didn't realize that it was it normal for other people. Yeah. Right. Where do you right. get that inner confidence from to just say, fuck it, I'm just going to be me? I think it could be coming from my mother, maybe. I mean, it could be from my mother, the late Mary Elizabeth Cohen Jenkins. Here's the woman who's looking. <laughs> Here's the woman who's buried six of her 10 children before we buried her. Wow. My, God. my mother was wow. five foot. I'm six four. My mother was like five foot four. My mother would say her exact mm. words. If a motherfucker hits you, hit him back. But she also said to me, respect people. And my grandmother said the same thing to me. Respect people, young, black, white, green, purple, blue, whatever color, whatever gender, respect people. And have manners because manners and respect will carry you where money cannot. Mm, I like that. And that's, that's one thing that I keep in my head. And my old boss, Marshall Lewin, who, when I worked at Bert Duff Goodman, said to me, when I made a mistake, she said, you appear to be smarter by asking questions than not asking questions at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Email the Marco said to me at dinner, yes, email the Marco said to me at dinner one day in, in Manila. She said, you know, you have to be careful because you have so much authentic personality and character. And that can be a problem for people who want to have the light. She said, you must remember when you walk into a room, you take the air out of the room by just being present, Mm -hmm. by just being you. And um, remember, it's another thing I wrote down. It's hard to be hated, but harder to be envied. Interesting. From the mouth of a woman who built billions (laughs) <laughs> from the country. So for me, it was kind of like, oh, and then Madame Jacqueline said at a fitting in Paris. I said, I should have known that. And she said, no, 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 no. Uh, Jay, you're not here to know, you're here to learn. 
Mm. Oh. So those are, nice. that, those are things that I carry through every day with me that were those small things that made you kind of go, hmm. And again, I just say, Amy, I don't know where the confidence, I don't know where it comes from. I just didn't care what you thought about me. I was a busy girl trying to be, <laughs> be and do me and being and doing me. Not only was I trying. And you were. Yeah, yeah I was just being and, and doing. So it's just all just so strange. And maybe after this interview, I would sit back in my head and kind of go, yeah, that didn't make sense because you, you're, you're sort of reliving it and explaining or sharing the story again mm -hmm. about what the impact it had for you as a young gay girl. And, you, and, you, and I hear an accent coming from you. I hear it every now and then like an Aussie. Yeah. Yeah, because you try to hide it, but you can't, girl, because it's just certain <laughs> person just come out. I'm you not trying to hide it. Yeah, it sounds like it. It's so like you said, and every now and then it kind of, Creep something. It's just like snoring. And I'm thinking, <laughs> she sounded like she sounded like an Aussie to me. It's kind of like, mm, you got it. You she got is it. an Aussie, yeah. And it because it's all the other languages that go through my head. So I said, you know, I can hear the sounds. For me, it's about sounds. Mm. And I think sounds Listening. play when I explain a story. It, Present an accent, explained in the accent in which the story was uh, shared with me. And it, people think, now, here's what's really funny about that. People think mm -hmm. that somebody says, oh, you, you stop, you're making fun of them. I'm like, no, I'm just explaining how they explain the story. You know, that's her right. accent. You know, yes. It's, yeah, it's the accent. I'm not making fun of her, but some people find it very insulting. You know, you know when I said to them in, in, in Svenska, you, and you kind of go, you hear Sesame Street, Swedish, versus the northern versus southern part of Sweden. You hear that sound. You know, that, where we're going. Yeah, it's kind of going, so you kind of go, oh, so that all goes part into the head and character building and personality. That makes me a crazy person. That's where I'm going with that one. It makes you become this this bitch is nuts. Okay. This, this, this bitch is crazy. Because she's speaking, right now she's speaking tongues. So we don't know what she's saying. Because she's just nuts, you know? But um, that's where we went, girl. That's actually funny that you said that you're crazy. <laughs> because a question that we even wrote down is how have you stayed mentally well in this industry? So, um... <laughs> just embrace the crazy. Jack, just answer the yeah. question for me. Just embrace the crazy who you are. Listen, I feel safe in my, in my walls. Hmm. And this is almost not, the pandemic thing is, it's not really a crazy thing for me. My only problems then not being able to travel how I used to travel when I, when I want to go home I've been home now uh, tomorrow will be one year I have not been home in Paris wow mm -hmm. because of you know the shutting down again and having to go if you get stuck and they're letting you in and you have to maybe go through Belgium I don't want to go through Belgium. I got too much shit and too much piece of luggage to go through several cities and then say we're not ready for you Americans to come through here yet but I have a residence there so I got all the, I just got all the papers sent, you know, mm -hmm. so we'll go to my apartment. I'm going to guide you through. This is what I need back for the French embassy. So I just kind of go home and just kind of breathe. But when I travel so much, when I get home, what keeps me sane is that I'm in the safety of my own space. I'm not in a hotel room and I cook. I also cook. And I didn't learn how to cook. Nice. So now I've been cooking girl for 135 years. And I cooked because I was, in, I was in love with someone and I was trying to cook and make things at home. And um, yeah, so I mean, and then it's really strange too. And nothing really ever happened. And um, as in love with him that I was, he wasn't sure who he was. And then 27 years later, you end up in bed together with this person. Mm -hmm. Isn't that strange? Oh, okay. 27 years later. You end up in bed with them and they're explaining <laughs> to them how they felt back then, but you're still married now and you have kids. But yet, I always made you feel comfortable being who you were. And that scares a person because then you have to reveal your soul and who you are. And um, it's an emotional, it's an emotional Isn't thing. But um, yeah, I mean, so for me sitting here at home, in my space 
my mental place is okay. I'm entertaining myself, looking at trash TV that doesn't take too much thought. You got Netflix, you got <laughs> Hulu TV, all the stuff you have going on here. I'm looking at old mm -hmm. videos, you know, on, on YouTube. You're looking at things that are funny, things that may entertain you. Looking at old fashioned show videos, looking at inspiration, looking at the walks of the girls back then, the girls now. Um, I remember watching in like middle school, I'd watch you like do your runway and I'd like strut down my hallway in Bondi Beach and be like, yes, I am America's Next Top Model. Meanwhile, I'm five foot two, so. And in Australia, you can't That's be America's nice. Next Top Model, you're Australian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Well, they had, they had, um, yes, they had French. that Russian girl. The Rutsky. Top Model for Rutsky. The British invasion too. British yes, invasion. Yes, yes. I remember we had the French girl that was in Amsterdam. We had the French girl. That yes. was yes. And we well, also, enough. meanwhile, I'm joking. I d obviously I don't want to be a model. It sounds like a very tough industry. No, but you I'm not cut out. But, for. Okay, okay, girl, listen. You do have a lovely face. Yes. And you can sell beauty products. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I I actually don't want to be a model. That's no, like, no, but I, but I, but I'm saying. Truth. Yeah. No, but, no, no, but I'm saying. But you don't have to now. be like, oh, but you're pretty. That's no, no, no. But fine. you have, but, no, but you have a beautiful face. You have a beautiful face. You have a beautiful face, and you can sell. Because all oh, girls, I'm saying, I'm not tall enough, but you can sell beauty products. Mm -hmm. You don't need, you don't need to be tall mm -hmm. to sell lipstick, eyeshadow, makeup. You know, hand you modeling. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> no. Um, what you don't believe um, in that? Look, look. get get close. Model? Wait, Jack, get close to the camera so I can slap in your damn face for a <laughs> pop pop hand right. modeling. Oh, oh. Girl. Anyway. <laughs> Whoa, what's wrong with hand modeling? You, you're not that pretty girl, but we can use your hands. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That I'll do. Better oh, than I can nothing. Do like anonymous, yeah, and then I don't have to actually like go through the emo emotional torment of being an actual model. They just won't know that it's me at all. Yeah, but I think to answer your question clearly and precisely about my mental place, I just kind of go through things that don't take too much thought and just have visually yeah. and create and. But what has happened though, is my fingers aren't created to make clothes right now at the moment, because I have no place to wear them. Mm -hmm. and, by the time, yeah. and by the time I create them now, by the time the world opens up, and, and I see myself opening up like that part of the Wizard of Oz, where she, where she lands in Oz. <laughs> so you want to be able to come out of something. You want to be able to wear something. You want to be able to wear something fabulous. But it's kind of like, mm -hmm. yeah, by the time you make it and wear it, I want to wear it now. But I see you strutting down the street. You can wear it down there, jaywalking. I see well, I I just did something for a prostate cancer this uh, weekend. Actually, I did it in Washington Square Park. And a lot of my J, a lot of my videos that you know the jaywalking ones that you see, sometimes I just ask strangers on the street, mm -hmm. can, you, can you hold my mm -hmm. phone? I just say like, huh? I said, just hold really? my phone. Really? <laughs> I said, man once. And I said, excuse me, he's looking at me, and I said, can you? Oh. I say, I'm Why just gonna camera. Up. I said, and just can you just? I'm gonna walk towards you and walk past you and give me about my phone, and he's like this. <laughs> so he says, oh. That's he says, oh, awesome. What? He said, you want me to do what? I said, just just hold it and I'm just gonna have you take it when I when and I I you know and I kind of feel the person not gonna run, run away with my phone. I said, I'm just gonna back up. I said, mm. and I'm gonna walk, and when I just come in, just stand and hold it. And he's like <laughs> And when he does it, a car goes by. I said, mm. rip him, Miss Jerry, love you. And then he looks at me like <laughs> I want the people to go and follow follow you so they can watch you jaywalk. So where can they find you? Oh God, Jesus Christ, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know your own Instagram handle? <laughs> Are you serious? Wait a minute, yeah, yeah, but the thing is, wait, wait, because I want to make sure, because we I was trying to get them to remove, I was trying to get them to remove the underscore. Uh, okay. Well, okay, okay, and, yeah, well, so okay. Yeah, so I was trying to, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. I was trying to get okay. it removed. Nobody is still there. Miss underscore J Alexander. Yeah, they didn't remove it. Awesome. It's still there. And it's not J-A-Y, it's J. J, yes. Letter J Alexander. Yeah, I yes. had to go. Absolutely. Look. And um, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, it's what it is. 
<laughs> well, it has been <laughs> an absolute pleasure. <laughs> you yes. are an icon, and you know it, and we know it. And thank you Living for coming legend. on. Well, yes. you know, things things are shifting. The earth is shifting. The earth is moving, and hopefully, we will be able to go back and to hug people again, <laughs> see yes. people again. Eventually, I assume that we will. Yes, <laughs> and, and be able to. You know, but we have to just kind of follow those, those rules. So stay in, stay safe, wear your mask, wash your hands, wash your ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for listening. I'm Amy Oddman. I'm Jack Dodge, and this is Dating Straight. See you next Tuesday. I don't need that. Bye. Bye. You can be a broken hearted lovers. You can help.